dear friends welcome to this edition of uh, of vbs anatoma a series of uh, uh, gross anatomy videos today's video we will cover the posterior triangle this is an important uh, area with lot of uh, uh, clinical uh, applications now not only that it's often used uh, it's often asked as a window dissection uh, in your practicals any of the structures in the posterior triangle could be a short note question for example lymph nodes of the posterior triangle nerves of the posterior triangle boundaries of the posterior triangle contents of the posterior triangle I mean, these these are the different ways by which uh questions could be asked in the exams next let's take a look at uh, a dissection of the posterior triangle uh, the muscle sternocleidomastoid is a key muscle uh, that you need to keep in mind because it it divides the uh, neck area into an anterior triangle anterior to the sternocleidomastoid and a posterior triangle posterior to this muscle now that is the apex of the uh, posterior triangle the mastoid process and the posteriorly the superior nuchal line this is where the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius uh, meet at that point is the apex of the triangle now base of the triangle is the clavicle bone especially the middle third of the clavicle so we have an apex we have a base then the boundaries as already mentioned the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and the anterior border of the trapezius muscle i will repeat the posterior border is nothing but the anti anterior border of the trapezius muscle and the anterior border of the triangle is the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle just remember the middle third of the clavicle at the base uh, is important clinically because any trauma to the clavicle the event the clavicle is broken the broken ends can uh, impinge against the neighboring structures remember right behind this part of the clavicle the subclavian vein is there the uh, trunks of the brachial plexus uniting to form the cords are there a lot of important structures are there so likely that one of one or more of these structures could be injured um hence clavicular trauma is is very very important as far as its relevance to the posterior triangle is concerned next the roof of the triangle is nothing but skin and superficial fascia it has been removed in this dissection nevertheless of theoretical interest then deep to it platysma and the deep cervical fascia as already mentioned in other videos these two layers it's difficult to separate out invariably we remove it uh, as a single flap next the floor is the prevertebral fascia beneath which are a number of muscles i repeat the floor is the prevertebral fascia beneath which there are a number of muscles but before we go into the floor muscles let's divide this triangle by the inferior belly of the homohyoid muscle i am showing it there now that muscle divides this triangle the posterior triangle into an upper larger triangle and a lower smaller triangle now you see that upper triangle formed by the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid the anterior sorry anterior border of the trapezius and the homohyoid muscle as a base 
is the occipital triangle. Next, below the occipital triangle is the subclavian triangle or the suprascapular triangle. Repeat, subclavian or suprascapular triangle. In this triangle, there is no trapezius. The sub subclavian or the suprascapular triangle is bordered by the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, the homohyoid superiorly and inferiorly the uh, clavicle uh, bone. Next, let's um, uh, see the uh, structures in the floor. You can see that flashing green animation. Now that is nothing but the spinal accessory nerve and the muscle that is uh, the brown structure immediately behind it is the levator scapulae muscle i repeat the spinal accessory nerve and the muscle behind it is the levator scapulae next right above the levator scapulae is the large area that's for the splenius capitis muscle these are all floor of the posterior triangle next at the very close to the apex uh, the point where the uh, sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius converge uh, you will see a small bit of the edge of the semispinalis capitis muscle i repeat semispinalis capitis this muscle is recognized by the vertically oriented muscle fibers Next, we have identified three muscles already, levator scapulae, splenius capitis and semispinalis capitis. Now, lower down, you can see the flashing arrow, uh, the blue color arrow. Keep a note on that. Now, the area behind the arrow and the area in front of or below the arrow. The area behind the arrow is the scalenus medius muscle. And the area in front of it, that is in this photograph below it, is the scalenus anterior muscle. That flashing arrow itself is the trunk of the uh, upper trunk of the brachial plexus uh, for reference. That means the scalenus medius is behind. The scalenus anterior is in front and between the two diverging muscles the uh, trunks of the uh, brachial plexus uh, rather the roots of the brachial plexus are uh, coming out next let's uh, go a little more detailed into the contents we have identified almost all the muscles now that flashing dashed arrow as already mentioned is the uh, ax spinal accessory nerve that nerve is important because it not only supplies the sternocleidomastoid but also runs across the floor of the triangle and uh, supplies the trapezius muscle although it is in the floor the the total thickness of this area is not much so any blunt injury or sharp injury is likely to um, damage the axil, uh, the spinal accessory nerve. Now, it may be a, a trauma of this kind, or more commonly, when block dissections. That means in in certain lymphadenopathies where metastasis has occurred to these lymph nodes. When the lymph nodes are removed, radical dissection of the nodes. It's possible that uh, inadvertently the accessory nerve may get cut or it may be trapped in one of the uh, carcinomatous nodes uh, with resulting symptoms because uh, if it is cut in the posterior triangle, the trapezius will be paralyzed. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an important point to note. That's the spinal accessory nerve. Next, below the spinal accessory, C3, C4 sensory branches. Next, now you see, 
these are the other structures cutaneous nerves that emerge from the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid a rough location is junction of upper one third and lower two thirds of the posterior triangle now this um, highlighted nerve is the lesser occipital nerve next great auricular nerve remember it goes forwards whereas the lesser occipital follows the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and goes towards the occipital region whereas the great auricular runs forwards to an area covering the external ear and the large area in front of it that roughly corresponds to the skin over the parotid gland now that's the great auricular nerve third transverse cervical nerve it winds around the posterior border runs forwards towards the uh, anterior midline of the neck and then the supra clavicular nerves it comes down divides into a lateral intermediate and a medial group of fibers you can trace these fibers across the clavicle into the pectoral skin roughly up to the level of uh, the angle of 2e now remember they are all superficial nerves any injury to the skin and a little bit uh, deep to it is likely to cut one or more of these nerves with resultant sensory uh, loss to the skin that's the supra clavicular nerves next continuing the contents upper trunk of the brachial plexus was introduced to distinguish between the scalenus medius and the scalenus anterior we had just re cap that for reference in this context <laughs> homohyoid in this case has been reflected downwards and laterally so that now the whole thing looks like a single triangle this is just to make sure that the structures are clearly visible you can see the upper trunk of the brachial plexus then the middle trunk is there and lower down very very close to the trabecule the two um trunks meet at the herbs point remember herbs point is located here now rem the being at the uh, upper end of the brachial plexus uh, right behind the clavicle once again prone to uh, trauma remember at this point the i will show you in a later stage of the dissection the suprascapular nerve emerges from the herbs point that could also be injured because that nerve then goes down to supply the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscle so any injury to this nerve may, will cause um, abduction uh, difficulties the initia initiation of abduction is lost next now this is very very important the scalenus anterior although i identified it in the previous a little while back is very particularly identifiable because of the phrenic nerve in front of it i repeat the phrenic nerve is in front of it that's the way you identify the scalenus anterior muscle now that artery is the suprascapular artery a branch of the thyrocervical trunk i repeat a branch of the thyrocervical trunk from the first part of the subclavian artery now you see this subclavian triangle that is below the uh, inferior below the homoid you can add a few more uh, structures first rib and the first digitation of the serratus anterior as uh, additional contents of the floor of this triangle now uh, let's let's take a short break uh, vbs anatoma is a channel on youtube where i have hosted a number of uh, videos on gross anatomy and histology uh, of the human body so interested students can opt to subscribe and also uh, click on the bell icon so that you can receive uh, periodic uh, uh updates as and when new videos are released
Now that was an overview of the posterior triangle. Uh, it has been rather extensive um, and there are a lot of important clinical points which I have highlighted then and there from time to time. I hope uh, you have benefited from this discussion. Uh, wish you all the best, my dear students.